express the way I feel for you. Every day I pray that I may wake up and find you a lord, not a squire as you are, so that this love we have could have some hope, for as it is, there is no chance for us. Why, Claudio? Why must it be this way? Why can I lo not love you freely? What a cruel, cruel world we live in. But no matter what, I will love you. Remember that. Till next time I see you, all my love, Gwen. Child, your mother and father require your presence in the drawing room. And I go. Nurse, take it to him, please. Why do you waste your time? He's no equal for your birth. Love knows no boundaries. Daughter, we have tidings of great joy. Do you remember my good friend Lord Edric? We fought together in the Crusades. A very noble man. Yes, Father, I recall the man. Why do you ask? He has bordered me with great inquiry. He has asked for your hand in marriage. But, Father, he is so old. Guinevere, he is a fine man, worthy of your noble birth. But, Father, I do not love him. Love? It is not a matter of love. It is a matter of your place in society. You will marry Lord Edric. It is your duty. <laughs> Gwen, what's the matter? It's my father. He's forced me to get married. What? How can he do that? What about us? You knew Get, never get married. I just wish there was a way. I can make a way. I will challenge this suitor to a duel. It would be beneath him to decline. Whoever wins gets your hand in marriage. But no, Claudio. This man is a knight. He's killed many men. I would not have you die upon his hand. I would rather die upon his hand than see him take yours. <laughs> my queen, it is such a weight off my shoulders to know that our daughter is going to a good house. Do you remember our wedding? How could I forget? We didn't even know each other, but despite that, I was so happy back then. And now? It lessens. The same people every day, the same little chatter. And I sit here sewing while you're off traveling, fighting wars, and courting other women. Who is your new trend? Don't talk to me like that. I hear she's with child. Yours? She's expecting twins. But only one of them is mine. Where's the man I'm supposed to meet here? Who dare challenge me? That is I. You, you're a butter boy. I am Lord Edric. How dare you challenge the likes of me? I'm as good a man as you. You'd be a coward not to attempt to prove me wrong. Coward? No man nor boy would call me a coward. Take your mark and I'll show you who's the coward. In Guinevere's name? Even in Guinevere's name. So we really did research our parts a lot. I learned a lot about the role of the king and the fiefdom and how the king really makes up all the laws for its fiefdom and there isn't really like 
set laws for all the different fiefdoms. They're just made up in their own little one. And also, they tried to keep like the royalty together, like the nobles, which is why they didn't let their daughter uh, marry outside of like the noble class. So, yeah, we, to answer your question, we really did research our parts to really get to know them better. Go. Yeah, we really tried to get into our characters, so we did some research. And, well, I found out that the noble ladies, they weren't, their lives weren't as great as you would have thought. Like, the ladies had to sit around in the homes and they just sewed and took care of the children. It wasn't as fun as you would have thought. And especially the castles, because people seem to think that castles are big and luxur lux <laughs> luxurious. <laughs> um, but they're not. People nowadays live a lot better than people in castles did back then. Because, like, the castles were just, like, made of stone and really dark and dingy and, like, moldy and cold. And we didn't have heat or furniture, so... We're pretty lucky nowadays. <laughs> you know, being an actor on days of our medieval lives, you really learn a lot. The knights used to live in these things called fiefdoms, but they didn't really have a set of rules. So they created a code of chivalry, if you will, that they used to enforce with a sword, stone, and an iron fist. It basically upheld honor. You know, one of the things about directing something like uh, Days of Our Medieval Lives, it's, it's a balance. You have to find a balance between the actors, between the scripts, gathering all the information, and just bringing it all together to try to show whatever it is you're trying to interact in that, in that episode. And for this particular episode, we were really focusing on what daily life, actual daily life, would have been for royalty of the Middle Ages. And you know, it wasn't, wasn't the same as it is now, you know, just go out and date and meet people and, and get married. Everything was organized because they would want to keep things together. They would want to keep the royalty, the money, and those families together. And so you couldn't decide anything for yourself. It was all decided based on basically a business transaction. And that was hard for people. It, did, it didn't always work out. And that's what we were trying to show in in this particular episode. And we're also looking at the actual roles of women in, in medieval ages because they didn't have the kind of roles that they have nowadays. You didn't have them in actual working roles. They were just uh, mothers, basically. They were meant to keep things running at the actual castle. Then we also showed the kings and the knights and the lords and the different levels, the social levels, because you, know, you had a king way up on perhaps close to the highest level, and he had supreme authority. He could pretty much live whatever life he wanted to, but he had people down, like, like the squires. They didn't have that kind of say. They didn't get to choose their life that way, and that would affect them in marriage, that would affect them in how they lived, that would affect them in the kind of work they could do. There was no way for them to really change that, and so we kind of showed how that would have affected their daily life.